exclusive interview for you guys and girls. I'm here with Bullet Sponge Bob. And uh, those of you who follow my channel, Davy VTV, right here, probably uh, may remember a couple of weeks ago, um, I went back to my old neighborhood and Bullet Sponge Bob interviewed me. Um, good dude. Want to welcome you on uh, Davy VTV. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out. You're you're known to be a First Amendment auditor, right? Correct. Um, what is interesting, and the reason I wanted to get you on here, what's interesting about the auditing activist community um, is that everyone, in my opinion, brings to the table. A little different specialty that's how I like to put it um, where I'm a second generation activist and as many viewers know my dad was a pioneer in the cop watching in the 80s long before YouTube long before the internet um, like I said everyone possesses and brings their own talent to the field so to speak and I mean the field like out and about as a First Amendment auditor, which if I'm not mistaken, that's mostly what your channel is based around. Would that be a fair statement? Correct. Um, t t tell the viewers a little bit about how you got into, especially the, the, the First Amendment auditing part uh, of, of law enforcement and police accountability, because that's what it is. It's an extension of... Uh, of what I like to call watching the watchers right you know well before I even knew people were watching the watchers I always had uh, my back up against the cops to begin with because I knew what they said and what they did were not exactly what they were supposed to be doing from experience <laughs> but I'm not saying all cops are bad that's that's not what the amendment auditors are saying we're saying we're out there to try to educate and exercise our rights before they are forgotten. Now, I gave a simple test to everybody. Simply take a, your phone or camera, walk into a post office, just take pictures of the wall, stay out of everybody's way, be quiet, and don't interfere with business and that, and see how many people are starting to freak out because of the camera. Now that's the true test of testing your amendment is are they scared of the camera or are they just scared of you asserting your rights? Absolutely. Um, a lot of people, they, they, they get, like, like Davey says, they have their own little way of handling it and bringing it to the table. Some of them are out there to test the metal of the police to see if they are the type that are going to go home and beat their wives and kids and dogs. You know, and if, if, if they find them, then yes, they're going to harass the hell out of them just to show this cop's not the metal that is needed to be a cop. And to me, to be a cop, you pretty much got to be Superman. You, it's hard. I, I, it's hard for me to hold back when people are yelling at me and cursing at me, but I can do it. But a cop has, has to do it. You know, I had the op, option of being cool with people or just tell them to go fuck off or just ignore them. The cop, he doesn't have any of those options. He's gone to a, a spot, he has to do his field investigation, he has to ask questions. How he asks those questions is what the amendment auditing is about. If a cop walks up, say somebody called up because they didn't know what Joe Blow over here is doing and he never seen Joe Blow in the neighborhood and come check it out, the cop will come out there and, and do his due diligence to see what this guy's doing. Now, when they get out there and they find the guy's just a regular Joe and he's really doing nothing, they should be done. All right, have a good day. And drive off. Right. That's where our different problems. That's not always in. the case. <laughs> That's not always the case at all. Uh, sometimes you'll get them keep wanting to ask questions. And you say, I'm sorry, I don't want to answer any more questions. And uh, again, that should be the end of it. Whether they get the feel that this guy has something wrong or that they can watch from the side, but they don't have to just keep harassing the guy right then and there. Right. Uh, they, they're already overstepping their bounds. Now, Different auditors will handle that differently. Some will just get right in their face, 
start cursing at them, calling them all sorts of names and this and that to get some sort of response, usually a bad one. They get cuffed and thrown in the back of the car and then the town has to pay for the cop overstepping his bounds. And I don't think it really has to go that. I'm not here to get that one case where I'm going to go in there and get $100,000 because the cop was dumb. I, I not, that's not what I'm here. I'm here for education. And I learned I'm pretty good at teaching people things. Uh, I've ran my own business for many years. I've been a boss of different companies running 60 some people and I really didn't ever ever had a problem with my employees. Once in a while I had one that just didn't fit into anybody. Right. You know, just didn't want to do what he wanted. You had to fire him. But as far as just arguing with people, no. I can usually get my point across calmly and coolly. If I start yelling and cursing at somebody, then you know I'm going to be in trouble. Right. And, and I'm just going to scare them down. You know, before I hit on something that's very important, and one of the main, probably the main reason why I wanted to interview you, which I'll get to in a second. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, it, it's, a good, it's a very good quality that you have, and that's why I wanted to showcase that. I wanted to put a little spotlight in, and use this channel as a platform um, to get that out there because it, it, it needs to be talked about. I'll get to that in a second. But you hit on an important point about the control that law enforcement officers must have. Look, I don't talk about this a lot, and I'm known to be, you know, some of my videos, you know, uh, known to be a little bit, you know, perhaps over the top, perhaps a little shrill, perhaps a little in your face. I am constantly running into people in public who recognize me or whatnot, and they, they say, I love what you do, and most of it is always good, positive. But I always tell them, even those folks, I said, listen, I don't get to talk about this a lot and I don't talk a lot about it on social media, but I always tell folks, if you can look past that shrill, kind of over the top, in your face kind of, you know, uh, style that I have. And again, we all have our different styles. There's a message there. Now, most folks, unfortunately, I don't want to put anyone down, but we all know some folks who are who are more fed by the mainstream media and who who basically sit down and, and, and for some reason or another are not capable of formulating their own opinion, their own views. They need to be told what to do by corporate America run media, which loves to spin and sensationalize for ratings because that's what it is. It's a ratings game. Ratings equals payola and payola is cash. So you, you are right. Police officers do have a hard job, and I'm the first one to admit that, in fact, I'll go further and say that the most dangerous call that a law enforcement officer can respond to or does respond to is a domestic uh, disturbance, domestic incident, because they literally are reporting to something that they have absolutely no idea what will be on the other side of that door when they arrive. At the same time, I've seen police officers escalate situations instead of de-escalating and defusing um it's a quality that they should have more because many times simply by talking to someone and respecting someone they can easily quelch down you know the fire but if you're coming there and you're already some you know big you know you got the roid rage going on which some of the cops it's no secret they're on the juice you're only going to make that situation that's already there's already an issue there that's nine times out of ten that's why you were called there's no need to make it there's no need to put fuel on the fire you need a, a, actually the opposite which is uh de-escalative and i'm not saying they always have that option sometimes they don't so i respect you for the following reason you mentioned that they do have a tough job and they do and one of the toughest things that a police officer has to do and there's no if, ands, or buts. They have to do it because they've chosen a profession where they are in a spotlight. And literally, in the sense of people like me or you recording them, they need to be able to remain and maintain a certain level of composure. It's not easy. I don't know if I could do it. I'm being honest. But I respect you for, and this is segues right into where I'm going, why I had you on here is because what I like about you, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't wanna make this interview about uh, bashing any other actives or whatever but uh, uh, groups, but I'll be honest with you. It's no secret that I'm a one-man show.